Hey, my loves, welcome to another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and comment because I love to bump gums with you. Hope you enjoy. Hello, my loves. Welcome to the Give Them Lala uh, podcast, the bonus episode. Boner. Boner, boner. Bonerific. <laughs> I'm excited for this topic. By the way, Jess, I want to thank you for keeping in your notes potential topics for the bonus episodes because the night before she always sends us what she has concocted in her notes and then we choose. Yes, and it's Lauren fun. Lauren chooses. I stand by and just go, hmm, wonder which one I'm going to be doing. Well, yeah. we all choose like and share. Choose. I do like when she chooses. Yeah. You always choose a good one. And I also, they'll just come to my head and I'm like, ooh, that'd be a good bonus topic. And I write it down. I love the bonus episodes. They're my I, favorite. They're my favorite they're too. The best. Can I tell you what I like about them? Yeah. Sometimes during the regular episodes when we talk about like hot topics or whatever, I feel kind of bad because I give my honest opinion. Mm -hmm. But it makes me feel bad when people are mean about me and I'm kind of mean about people on the podcast. <laughs> Yeah. Eye for an eye. Eye for an eye. eye, no, for what an I mean eye. about people who like don't care about like they wouldn't even know who I am. And I'm like, I hate Lizzo. And I'm like, <laughs> what? What is happening? Why are you saying that? Yeah, but people that As you I'm don't know are talking it, I like shit, have an out-of-body right? experience. Like, shut the fuck up. You don't even know this person. How do you hate someone you don't even know? I hate what she does. But guess what? You could come up. <laughs> You could come on tomorrow and say, I love Lizzo. And that's the beauty of this podcast. It's all yours. We have ADD, ADHD. We forget <laughs> and we forgive. Yes. What I what I really <laughs> like about the bonus episode is it sticks to making fun of me, myself, and I only. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, and yes. You know? And you guys. Yeah. I sweat fun. usually during these. It's a Do little you? bit more yeah. lighthearted. They are. So what is the topic for today, Jessica? Okay, fun topic, you guys. We The prompts, by the way, reminder... Because we've had a few of you ask. Um, they're always posted usually Sunday night or Monday morning on the Give Them Lala pod Instagram. They're posted on the stories and you guys can write in. So this one was, what's something that happened to you in grade school that has, has really impacted who you are today? We'll share our stories first and then go to yours. Okay. Easton, you want to start us off? Um, yeah. There's a lot. I was short curly headed but there was <laughs> i got my license at school through their driver's ed yeah and the seat was broken <laughs> it was five 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 <laughs> six and i that's had to not that short uh, that's as tall as i am yeah but for a, for a little for a boy for a boy like everybody you else is like may five have, eight you may have been a little five, bit more petite I may have been 5'4". You're a small one. I was a little guy. You're a little pinto bean. I was a little pinto bean. <laughs> you were so cute. That's why nobody ever let me flick their pinto bean. <laughs> but no! <laughs> moving on. Yeah, <laughs> <it's> filthy. <laughs> I, I took my t my test in a, a Geo, a Chevy Geo. If you did, know you what take they it are. through Skyline High School. Yeah. Okay. Dupe. <laughs> the football Roger coach. Dupay. Yeah, he was the. He was also the. Driver's, driver's ed, ed teacher? Yeah. I love small towns for some shit like that. Oh, small town? It's huge. <laughs> no. You're from Salt Lake City, Utah. 5A school, bitch. You better recognize. I don't know what Dupe is. Dupe Roger is, Dupe is, is a, a guy. No. <laughs> I grew up in Salt Lake City. Dupe is the town. No, where, where am I right bitch, now? Bitch, you are from You're Finger ADD. Lakes. You're not going to talk to us a about small towns. Finger Lakes? <laughs> I love uh, finger she some says, likes, bitch, right? you are from Finger Lakes. <laughs> small town. You would know a small town, wouldn't you? I know. If it was a small town, I wouldn't have got made fun of as much, probably. But it was big town, big oh, kids, little guy getting shit talked, right? Uh, but I had to yeah. take my driver's ed from Roger to pay, and I had to sit on my book bag. Stop. I couldn't reach the pedals, couldn't Ethan. see what the steering wheel. It really shaped who I was. <laughs> <laughs> and when you get out of the car, oh. you know, they were all watching. They and were? I had to get the book bag out with me. No! You're so sweet. How old were Proud. you? Proud. 15? Six, six, 16? Yeah, 15, 16, depending on. You were really. that small? That's smaller. You my, were smaller I got than my five. ID. I wish you could see Easton's. <laughs> <laughs> there's a picture of me and Easton. We're only two and a half years apart, okay? okay. Oh. And there's a picture of me and Easton in Hawaii. And I think I was 18. You were... 16. You were the tiniest little... You could have guessed I was 11. 
One hundred percent. Like the way that we looked, it was like you guys waited a long time to have kids. It's like no, they're two and a half years <laughs> apart. But do you remember we're standing next to that big, um, like oh, thing and pointing thing at, and the you're pointing at the wiener. Like this. <laughs> Can we find yeah, it? Yeah, we gotta find it. We we'll have find to it. find it. But yeah, we no, will find I, uh, it. But it just goes to show like how small and immature he was. I, was, <laughs> I lied on my ID. I know that for my driver, I was a hundred and. 30 pounds? Aww. Well, I said. I was probably like 110, not Aww. even. Maybe and less. Put 5'5", five, five, and I was probably 5'3 five, and a half, 5'4". Still taller than me. I hit puberty me. at 18. Okay, so you were late. See, boomer. but that's the thing. I looked, I'm 31. Do I look it? No. <laughs> no, you and sure you, don't. No, you sure don't. You sure, sure don't. doesn't. So that shaped who you are today. That's why you're so funny. Yeah, but he was so I, cute. Well, you he, had to hold make, on. That's the other Please thing I really do at, think. I had to make jokes about my height, my about hair, yourself, like little things like that. So it was Can easy. I show you a picture yeah. of Easton as like Please a tiny do. little toddler? We'll post this, you guys. <gasps> <laughs> are you? <laughs> Fucking kidding me? Yeah, that was 10th grade. Do you die or do you that die? 10th <laughs> grade. That's, that's, that's what it looked like in his driver's that license photo. That was really funny. No, but he's so See? cute. So, like, Ethan was always just the cutest. And I remember, like, I do, Sunday night rat. football. Yeah. And my dad would move the furniture so Easton could duct tape the football field. Still mm-hmm. in 10th grade. And he would watch the play so tiny. No, you were no, tiny. Know, Easton. Was but with this curly hair and he would watch the play, and then he'd redo it. He'd reenact the play. He loved the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> the Green, Green Bay, Bay Packer. <laughs> and then he'd go like this. Can you see my can back you pad? Can you see my back pad, Dad? <laughs> Dad, can you see my back pad? And then he would go outside and, like, slam himself into the grass because he liked to be scuffed to up. To be scuffed yeah. up. Okay, this makes me want to This was boy. before. Yeah, no, see? can I tell you? The yeah. only reason that I sit there and I'm like, oh, a boy would be so much fun is I think about TT in the backyard and him coming in and he wanted all the, he had to have the new cool face mask that like hey so-and-so buddy. running back from the tight Tennessee Titans had. Tennessee Titans. I was good. I was, I was nice he was at a football. Good little I was football really player. good. And then everybody hit puberty and that's when I didn't. No, and I remember. The dream was lost. Oh, yeah. asshole. But I remember during Little League, people across, like from other teams would be like, that number 11, he's fucking quick on his feet. You. And yeah. tiny. A so teeny. tiny. Yeah. But quick. Little, Find a hole, little tiny it. skinny legs. <laughs> it was so cute. TT. I, I was nice. I was nice. Played cornerback. And then, you know, ninth grade, everybody stepped going. And I didn't grow. So cornerback That's okay. Look short. at you now, though. You're I know. So cool. Look at you now on the Give Them All podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thriving. This is what dreams, dreams are, made are made of. I'm just glad I didn't, you know, peak then. Right? <laughs> right. Mm. A lot of people lot peaked, of people buddy. Did. A lot of people peaked. And you I'm very what? blessed I didn't. I'd rather talk shit on myself of who I was than go, I was fucking in the locker rooms and then being that, uh, Well, that's what's so important for people to understand is like junior high and high school and like the popular kids, don't worry about it. Because they're going to suck it's later. Like three or four years of your life. And I've seen the people who were popular in my high school. You don't want to be a high school peaker. Even <laughs> if you were popular then and you're popular now, hopefully you're more popular now. You don't want to be a high school peaker. Sorry, guys. That's true. You certainly do not. You should just be kind throughout throughout school because you could be peaking or you could be uh, thriving then and now and all the things. But just, you know, like be nice to the little pinto bean. <laughs> be nice because the pinto bean might talk shit on you. Um I, Jessica, I want you to go. Okay. Actually, yours is probably really good, so let me go. Oh, go. Because I don't want to let people down. Yours was really good, too. <laughs> yours was really good, too. But I think that my, like, grade school where things kind of shifted was when that boy who I was sitting next to and I had farted, and then I blamed it on him. Matt? I'm not going to use his name, <laughs> but we were himself? sitting there during story time. <laughs> and you know how you sit, you sit cross-legged? Yo, it's always and during you, story and time. you hold your legs like this as a kid. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And it, one, it, we had just had snack and milk time. Oh, and it slipped. <laughs> and then everyone looked at me and I went like this. You pointed to him. I pointed to him. So everyone made fun of him. And after that, he told everyone that I was a man. <laughs> Good for him. Don't let this bitch fuck you up. <laughs> He farted. Hell no, she got a dick. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? 
<laughs> she, 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 yeah, she's saying. the girl that was. And I remember was this little fucker yep. who was blonde named John. <laughs> We're not going to use the, the guy's <laughs> name, but the well, dick. This guy's a dick. <laughs> this guy's a dick. But don't help the guy that you blamed. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I said it. I said it. <laughs> and they called the Russin house. And Candace was talking to John. And I get on the phone and he goes, Oh, you do sound like a man. You're a man. And I was so embarrassed. Well, think of what you did to him in that classroom. I said he farted. He made up that I was a completely different well, gender. An eye which for is an fine. Eye. But I was like, what the fuck? And I was already so insecure about my voice and how big my hands are. <laughs> And then he made up that rumor, and it was very, very upsetting. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> Jeff, I'm sorry she blamed farting on you during reading time, but how Jeff, dare don't listen you? to Don't listen. Uh, yes. And then he Jeff. threatened me. He threatened my life. I'm calling the police. We had to go into the principal's office. What did he, he threatened your I life? I wrote about it in my book. You did? I don't remember. I the, certainly did. I don't remember this. <laughs> what did he try to do? We, we had beef from then on. It went into junior high school. Where's Jeff now? Peaked. The Jeff, he, he peaked. never peaked. Uh, he did. Who knows? He peaked Jeff. in third grade. Who knows? Who knows? That is horrific. I'm so sorry Jeff did that to That's you. That's why, you know oh, what? Yeah, here's the thing. How crazy. I'm sorry Jeff did that to you, but what you did to Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I said it for Big ah. deal. We all fart. Then why didn't you just say, I'm yeah, we all I fart. Because I was embarrassed. <laughs> 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 we can't win out in these streets, Jeff. We all fart. Take one for the team. <laughs> Whoever smelt it, dealt it. <laughs> oh, she says, take one for the team. <laughs> take one for the team, oh Jeff. Yeah, take one for, why didn't you take one for the team? I was embarrassed. <laughs> It okay. wasn't her time to take one for the team. <laughs> no. It was Jeff's time. Yeah. Jeff. Wish. Oh, Jeff, I feel for you. I bet Jeff still remembers that, by the way. Yeah, I hope As he's still going around saying story. she has a dick. Huh? I have the biggest dick out <laughs> in these streets. Don't don't even fucking hustle the hustler, all right? They call her tripod. <laughs> tripod. Oh, That's Jeff. my favorite thing to say to the boys on Vanderpump. I'm like, if you want to have a dick measuring contest, I will always win. So just fucking fall back. <laughs> True. True. Tweet a True. little dick is what James Kennedy calls them. <laughs> so I have two game changers to share with you when it comes to upping your glam game. I am totally obsessed with Impress No Glue Mannies and Impress Press On False Eyelashes because I'm very into just easy right now and anyone can do it. You are going to love them just as much as I do. Both require zero glue, so there is no damage to your natural nails and lashes. There's also no annoying dry time. And the best part, zero mess. One step and you're done. The lash style options are endless, and there are so many on-trend nails to choose from. Impress, no glue manis, and press-on falsies are the easiest and fastest way to upgrade your look in just minutes. The press-on falsies have a unique underlash application for a totally seamless look and are made with an exclusive self-stick technology that keeps them secure for up to 24 hours. The Impress Mannies have a patented super hold adhesive for up to seven days secure hold, and that's perfect for all of you busy mamas out there who don't have a lot of time to spend on glam but want to look your best. I completely get it. Impress No Glue Mannies and Impress No Glue Press On Falsies are absolutely a beauty must. You need to try them right now, so get yours today at impressbeauty.com slash lala and use code lala at checkout for 25% off Impress Manicure and Press On Falsies. That's impressbeauty.com slash lala and use code lala at checkout for 25% off. We all have that happy place we're always daydreaming about. Maybe it's a white sand beach or snow-capped mountains or just a hometown visit. But when you think about travel, we all think about that place. For me, Easton and my mom, that place just happens to be Hawaii. This is a newfound love of ours. We had such a fabulous trip the last time we were there. And I think I'm going to make it our regular trip. The beautiful beaches, the amazing food, the warm water and the completely chill vibe I'm obsessed with. I didn't get ready, not a one day. Whatever your happy place is, Priceline wants to get you there for a happy price, so you never have to miss a trip. I used Priceline to rent our car when we went to Hawaii, and if I told you how much money we saved, 
you would not believe me. And even though we had a stunning place to stay, I also checked out some of the hotel options and prices, and they were unbelievable. Only mentioning that because when you bundle and book your flights and hotels together on Priceline, you save up to $625. Just use Priceline and simply book your entire trip in one place. They truly have the deals you can't find anywhere else. So download the Priceline app today to save up to 60% off and go to your happy price with Priceline. All right, Jessica, go. Okay, I'll make these quick. I have two defining moments in grade school. Number one, I was in fifth grade. I'm from a small town. Fifth and sixth grade were combined. There was only four girls in fifth grade. The cool girls were in sixth grade. We shared a classroom. I didn't get along with the girls in my grade. So I, I wanted to be friends with the cool girls. I wasn't cool. I was a little chubby little girl. So I was planning and plotting. The girls would always walk together. We're walking to PE class, which was across the street. And I was like, okay, they're talking and they're cool. Let's just see if I can like get up next to them and say something. So I walk up next to them and I hear them talking and I say something funny based off what they said. And they all start laughing. And the one girl, her name's Kate, we became best friends, looked at me and she goes, she was the coolest. And she goes, you're funny. Do you want to hang out with us? And I was like, I did uh, it. Like acceptance. I made it into the cool group. And I think from then on, I was like, okay, you're, if you can be, maybe you're not cool or pretty, but if you're funny, they'll hang out. Like they'll hang out with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was in fifth grade. And then um, when I got a little older, seventh grade, I have a very large forehead. And I say that and people go, no, you don't. If I pulled my bangs back, you'd be like, oh, you do. So um, didn't have bangs, got made fun of it for a while. And I was in Spanish class and Mike S. <laughs> Mike said, S. I, I was know. just given the last <laughs> initial. <laughs> I would love you, Mike. I don't know. You him. know him? No, I, I mean, he, he was in my class. Um, he said I was new. I was new to the school. It was like my third day. And everyone was like, damn, that new girl has a big forehead. And uh, he said, we were in Spanish class and the lights, the electricity went out in the school. And he, uh, uh, the Spanish teacher was like, everyone, don't go anywhere. It's dark. The electricity's out. And he goes, why don't we put a light bulb on Jessica's forehead? It'll light up the whole school. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> that's so funny. And inside I was like, oh, You went my. home and cried in the you bathroom for 30 minutes? And everyone was laughing. They're like, that's so true. And, you oh, know, oh, no. I think no. it just made me stronger. And it embraced. It oh, and then I self-deprecate my forehead now to this day, and I really don't mind it. So I don't you, know. You know what though? Like hmm. at some point in time, we should go get the hairline surgery. I would love the hairline surgery. My well, Adam, he got. I've his never hair. noticed your forehead, uh, even but that's throughout what, everything. I and I've never been like, that. you got a giant forehead. I've right. seen you with your hair back. I've seen your hair wet. Yeah. I've never been like. It's pretty Her big. Forehead is huge. I've noticed it more in jujitsu videos because I get sweat and then the hair gets pushed back and I go, oh, there it is. It didn't go away. It's still there. Yeah. But it just means I got a big brain. That's exactly right, Jessica. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. very intelligent. Thank you, you so really much. Are, yeah. Thank you. And then I got cut from the basketball team in seventh grade. So that was true. Oh, you had a lot of traumatizing. Oh, and I went, I don't care. And yeah. then I went in the bathroom and cried my eyes out. I was one of two that got cut and all my friends made it. And we ran up to the list. It's probably your forehead. It's my fucking forehead. <laughs> it's my fucking You're like, she's good, but that forehead. But, that forehead. Right. but you would have know. thought like, hey, this is going to be a distraction for the other team. Let's get her on. She's only going to make it if she wears the bangs back at all times. <laughs> People are going to think it's the basketball. And then we have to shine the light on it and she'll go like this. <laughs> she'll defend the, the hoop. And shine her. it in their eyes. <laughs> it's like they're playing basketball in the sun. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. I love this podcast. It's I love so this fun. podcast. Jessica, it's I love so your fun. forehead. You we guys, love your thank forehead. You. It's so I gorgeous. Oh, thank you. You but know, that was laughing. a purge for me because even in my book, I didn't tell about the part that he started the rumor that I was a man. We're so sorry about that. <laughs> We're going to go. Let's, <laughs> let's okay. get him. Let's, get, I'm let's fine. go find him. He's, I'm sure, doing cool shit. I'm doing cool shit. Like, all is well. You know, like, I shouldn't have said it was you that farted, Jeff. I should have taken accountability. And I you still, wouldn't have been. Think depending on who you ask, apparently I still tr struggle with taking <laughs> accountability. So if you, would have, you wouldn't have had all that beef through elementary, junior high, if you just yeah, I the bet accountability for there that were part. moments that he and I would engage at school and I would come home when no one was home and listen to Fighter by Christina Aguilera. <laughs> 
Just to get back at farty Jeff? No, just to feel empowered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, we were beefing. There were times that I used 50 cent quotes on him. Like, on Jeff. that's that's how I, mm. I st- uh, remember the timeline of beef because I'm like, okay, when did that song by 50 cent come out at this point in time? Because I, t- I, I, mm. I am Tim those lyrics. Okay, when did I sing at the top of my lungs in the foyer? <laughs> <laughs> Fighter. But okay, that, yep, yeah, that's when it came out. So that had to have been this time. It's fine. You know what? I hope he's still not a dick. And if he is still a dick, he's just probably out there not doing cool shit like you, just farting. No, you know what? He's probably living a good life, married with kids. Lives in Utah, so yes. <laughs> he was more granola. He was oh. not a Mormon. He wasn't. He was more. No. Anyway, let's move on. Go for it. What did our friends say? Okay, we on got the a gram? lot of good things because we got like big things and small things that happened to you guys in grade school that stuck with you for the rest of your lives. So this one, oh. Oh my God, relatable. Being the only one in class not invited to a birthday party hits the same as an adult being left out. I hated when kids weren't invited. As a kid, I it gave me anxiety and I hate it now. I don't think it happens as much now. Do you guys remember that? Not being invited to birthday parties? Or seeing the kids that weren't invited? Actually, now that you bring it up, yeah. I remember yeah. getting going to a birthday party with Candace and our moms were dropping us off. And when we arrived, our moms left. Candace went in. They shut the door in my face, said, Lauren's not invited. I was so upset. My mom and Kristen came back, and Kristen made Candace leave the birthday party as well. <gasps> she was like, if Lauren's not invited, then you're not going either. That and is I, like, horrific. thought I was invited. Yeah. That's heartbreaking. I'm sorry. Oh, that is terrible. That didn't stick with Fuck you, them though. bitches. If you forgot about it. I, I'm sure, I, like, I, mean, I just... I live a really great fucking life. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't get invited to your lame-ass birthday party, and I've seen your life. Like, well, Karma's a real bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm fucking living the dream, ho. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, my, uh, I had a family member, I won't say who, there's five of us kids that wouldn't get invited, and I would, and we were close, and it it infuriated me every time. Now would you at go, school, or would you if stay you, back? Mm-mm, I would stay back, or I'd to my mom would be like, "The fuck, no, Jess is not going if he he's not invited." Yeah. I don't know if there's a lot of schools out there like this, but there are schools in Los Angeles that if you invite one kid from the class, you have to invite, invite them all, class. so Good. it's all or none. That's Good. A, we did that. If you brought a snack for the class when I was in elementary, you got to bring a snack for everyone, not just one person. Yeah, mm-hmm. it it really that? affects people. It like really Miss yeah. Did that a lot. I don't really, like, now I have a really small <clears throat> group of friends, so I'm invited to the places I want to be invited to and not invited to the places I don't want to be at. Yeah. Um, keep okay. going. So, a lot of these, uh, so I'll read just this one, but a lot of got called fat a lot as a child, and now I'm not. So, if can that, you guys... That's a win. There. That is, you know what? Yes. I had my chubby years where I would get, I remember my crush Jeff, I wore a belly shirt because I thought it was cute. My crush Jeff was like, Jeff, assholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Jeff, he said, I wore a belly shirt and I like walked out. I think I was like 10 and I was like, he's going to love this. And he was like, ew, I didn't know you were fat. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. And I was like, that was rude, Jeff. And I went in and changed. Like now if you hear that someone called someone fat, you're like, wow, you're ignorant. You're uneducated. You're disgusting. Whereas it seemed to be like totally for like it would come out of people's mouths. And although it didn't hit, like think about even like publications posting Tyra Banks on the mm. cover talking about her weight gain. And like and Jessica Simpson, yeah. she's lost control of herself. And now you look back at those pictures, you're like, what were they talking about? Yeah, that's called ass, bitch. Yeah. And that's no, called a woman. And I do have to say, I have friends who are, you know, a close friend who's still considered overweight and has always been her entire life. And the amount it affected her entire life, she's like, thank God now she's way more like accepting and positive. But it's like traumatic for years. It is. Guys being like, I'm not dating her. She's fat. It's like, ugh. As if they're some prize. I know. Mm. You're receding and you're a sophomore. (laughs) (laughs) That is, like, like, if we're going to throw stones, <laughs> bitch, oh, no. let's not step in here like you're Brad Pitt. <laughs> we all oh, by the way, I do not approve of, approve of either. Brad Pitt. No, oh, I don't. Just Maybe I looks. should use someone else. <laughs> <laughs> and <You> look. action. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. 
It can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves way too thin, especially when we're out and about because the weather is getting much warmer. Maybe you thrive around people or maybe you need some more alone time. Therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. And it isn't just for those who have experienced major trauma. Therapy with BetterHelp is a good place to start when you want to understand you a little bit better. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash GTL today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash GTL. Did you know today is a great day to warranty? Well, actually, every day is a great day when you're not worrying about your appliances and home systems. And that's what you get with an American Home Shield warranty. I signed up with American Home Shield the moment I decided to buy my house. With an American Home Shield warranty, unexpected breakdowns like a leaky faucet or faulty water heater won't break the bank because covered repairs and replacements are taken care of just like that. And not by me, my mom, or Easton. We wouldn't know the first thing to do if something stopped working in the house. I just contact American Home Shield when a covered item breaks and their trusted and qualified pros will fix or replace it based on the coverage limits in your agreement. So having that sort of reassurance from American Home Shield is something to celebrate. When it comes to protecting your appliances and home systems, don't worry. Be warranty. Visit ahs.com slash GTL today to get 20% off any plan. That's ahs.com slash GTL for 20% off any plan. For more details, see ahs.com slash contracts for coverage details, including limit amounts, fees, limitations, and exclusions. New Jersey residents, the product being offered is a service contract and is separate and distinct. Oof, a lot of these. So a lot of really sad, like, deaths and car accidents. I had a like a couple friends die in car accidents. So oh, I'll just read maybe? this one. My best friend oh. was killed by a drunk driver in first grade. Don't drink and drive stuck with me ever since then. Oh my God. How could it not? That's like yeah. life shifting. And oh yeah. Drunk driving. I had a friend killed by drunk driving in high school. It's like, I feel like, a, I feel like many people I know had a friend who died from a car accident. Did you guys? Yes. Yeah. It's really, really devastating. Yeah. So devastating. Um, Sorry for your loss because that is traumatizing. People were thinking about it. You what? I was thinking about like everybody in high school that got into a crash DUI. Were yeah. you? Yeah. I yes. Yeah. Wild. Um, you know, bullying. I'm seeing a lot of bullying's a big one. You know, you think about it now, and it's like we tackle not tackled. There's still a ton of bullying, especially online. Even possi- even more so nowadays because you can do it behind a computer. You weak pussies but (laughs) back then bullying in person it would get physical there were physical fights fights. i don't remember many things getting physical in school are you serious kyle there was a fight every thursday friday saturday at that place whether it be skyline east yeah but they would say we're meeting up here to fight right it was like dudes duking it out i'm talking like at school someone calls yeah there were always fights in the glass I hall. was never at school. Yeah, in because high you had two periods. You went first, second, and were home. Yeah. It was after school Yeah, because where people the were break. rude. So I yeah, yeah. left. Yeah. Goodbye. I left. Yeah, she you've left. been you've out oh, you've been spoken out about your bullying. Yeah. No, she But here okay. Hmm. And I'm just throwing this out there. Okay. Because my mom always talks about we can only control ourselves, right? Bullying is going to happen. I do not condone it. I will cut a bitch who bullies my child. I've been bullied. I've turned into the bully. I think it would be a good idea for schools to start teaching how to deal with the bully Mm -hmm. rather than just fixating on don't bully because jealousy comes into play and jealousy is very scary and you cannot control other people. So I'm wondering if school, because maybe they're doing this. Maybe they are teaching, you know, they need to start teaching self-esteem. If you're feeling like you are insecure about your body, what are things you can do to start accepting your body at such a vulnerable age? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Because that is not easy. Yeah. You know, I feel people are like, where'd you get your confidence a lot? And it's like, well, I haven't always been this way. I'm 33 years old and I've had people really be unkind to me. And it's like run and crawl in a hole or don't. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do we figure out how to teach these these kids how to be confident young people that when someone says something, it's like it rolls off my back. I don't give a fuck. And also recognizing, which I just learned this past year and started doing, these assholes, these bullies, these mean people are the most, are the ones who are either bullied at home, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. by their own family and parents, or the most insecure, sad, miserable. And it's like when you get bullied or people are mean to me, I'm like, my thought nowadays is like, oh, I feel so sorry for you. Like, you are, this is really sad. And I know. There's a lot that goes into it. Because yeah. not everyone has the same type of home life where mm-hmm. they go home and they feel safe and their mom and dad, you know, build them up and send them back out into the big bad world like Easton and I had. Mm-hmm. And I just, I throw these things around a lot in my mind and just hope that parents, when they choose to have kids, because it is a luxury, I talk about this all the time, just because you pop out a baby does not make you a mother. It does not make you a father. That is a role that you take on and you earn, and that is a, the highest, highest honor to be a parent. Mm-hmm. So I just hope that parents take on that role and say, like, home is where my child feels safe. I uplift them. I don't critique them. We have productive conversations so that when we go out into the world and the world tries to break them down, they're prepared. Mm-hmm. And when it gets to be too much, when they come back home, we, we do the rebuilding again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. We're yeah. all just out in these streets doing the best we can. But it is, I mean, it's it's a good point because, like I said, there's not, there's bullying online. There's bullying everywhere, unfortunately, still. So it's well, it's not everywhere. Really, Even yeah. on this podcast. I'm not blind to the fact that we sit there and we're like, your music sucks. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> like, yes, it is hard out here. Yeah. Yeah. You just, I like the idea of teaching people to be not affected. The second I felt unaffected by rudeness, I'm like, ah, life is good. I know. I almost feel bad for people who like get through. I have a a wall thing up that if, unless you have a blue check mark, you don't get in. Mm -hmm. But there are people who get in and they'll write me like really intense, mean things. Yeah. And I'm like, it makes me feel bad that you took so much time because I could not be any less affected by this. Right. Like a lot of people being like, I used to be your biggest fan. I hate you this season. I'm like, if only I cared. Could you Bye. imagine yeah. taking even five minutes of your life? They're writing paragraphs and she's reading a line. To write someone, <laughs> yes. To write someone. I know. You guys, I love you so much. But if you're thinking about writing me some skating, like don't waste your time, please. Short and sweet. Do something more productive because I truly don't care. Truly. Like, if you used to love me and you don't this season, I don't care. Don't care. Don't Go volunteer. Care. Sorry. At we the don't. Humane Society. <laughs> I don't live my life based on what you think. We so, don't know you. I don't know you. I love you. I'm sending you all the love. Good luck. Mwah. I don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Wow. Anyway. That was... That was fun. It was all the notes again. <laughs> it was all the notes again. <laughs> Oh, but thank you guys for writing in. There was a lot of great ones. Yes. Um, I love you guys. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Give Them Lala bonus episode, right? Yeah. You were just about to say boner episode, weren't you? Uh, (laughs) All I think about with being pregnant is just giant boners all the time. (laughs) Like someone throw them at my face. I don't even care. No one, no one, no one. (laughs) Throw Uh, the boners at Lala's face. oh. Oh, I love you guys. Thank you again. We'll catch you next week. Thank you so much for watching another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe. Did I get all three? I'm getting really good at that.